In the introduction, I talked about content and form being separate things when you're designing with Joomla. Now I want to show you what that looks like in a practical sense. And this has really revolutionized website development, the separation between content and format. So let me show you what it looks like. We're looking at the at-risk intervention website, which is pretty plain because I'm not a very good designer. And this is just a basic template. If I wanted to change the look of this, well, back up just a second. With Joomla, there is a front end, which is what you're seeing right now, the actual website. And there is a back end where you can change things in the structure of this. You can also add con content, and you can change the modules and functions that you see on the front of this. So right now, we're looking at the front end, which is the forward-facing, client-facing sort of display. If we want to, looking at this, it looks like uh, it's just one big mass, right? We've got some a menu here, we've got some donation buttons, a calendar, projects and a login form, and then a bunch of content in here. And I have told it that I want two, uh, three main articles here, and then a bunch of other ones that have a little read more sort of thing that you can go and look at and read more of that, that article. But you can choose that in this. It's how many articles display, if any, in the front. So this is not just one page. This is a collection of modules. And let me show you what the internet sees when it looks at this. These are the positions for the modules to go into. And you can see they're all labeled. This J Events calendar is in position 7. It's got some styling. This is also in position 7. This position 7 is this whole right side column. This is the main content area. You can see that my menu is in position 1, and I could change that. I have another little position up here called position 0, where I could put a search box, I could put social media, I could assign all sorts of modules that have specific functions to that one little thing. The positions are the positions on the template, and they vary from template to template. You can normally assign more than one module, like donations, and events, calendar, and our projects, to a given position, and they'll just line up in the back. Um, in the, in the back of this, uh, you can change the order in which they line up here. I could move the events calendar up to the top and put donations below it. Or uh, I could move, uh, I could enable another sidebar over here and move some of the stuff over here. But this is what you actually see. A template is just a group of positions that have different modules in them. So a template is a group of positions that have modules assigned to them. If a position is empty with no module assigned to it, it will be blank. Just like I have a column over here and there's nothing in it. Position 8 has nothing assigned to it, so it's blank. Position 0 has nothing assigned to it, so it's blank. So this is the actual uh, format of it all and what the computer is saying. So, leaving that behind for a moment. Remember I said there's a front end and there's a back end. And this is what the back end looks like. Let me show you what happens when I change templates because this is really exciting. I'm going to go to Extensions, Templates, Templates, and this will show me which templates I have uploaded into this. We're currently using this Protostar. Now, templates are modifiable. So, for instance, you see this OEB dog wash details and files that looks pretty much like this Protostar, right? Well, I did some things to this template to make it what I wanted to use for that particular event. So, some things in the module positioning are, and in the header are permanently changed in that file. It was built off this one, as you can see from looking at 
the uh, previews on it, but it is a separate one. Now, to change the look of what you're seeing, you go to Styles. Okay, and these are all my styles right here. Now, remember what this looks like. At Risk Intervention, pretty plain sort of stuff, right? Okay, I'm going to take this Qualify file, style, and I'm going to make it the default. Right now, Protostore is the default, and I can tell that because there's a little star right there, and it's on all the pages. So I'm going to take Qualify and make it the default page for everything on the website. I'm going to go back to At Risk Intervention. Huh, nothing's changed, right? Well, no, I need to hit Refresh. Always hit Reload. Boom. Look at that. I've completely changed the look of this template, but have not touched the content. Same content right here, same content, same content, but a totally different look. Now we have a slideshow up here. This is the name of that module that we can change, put our own pictures in. And once we change this in the back end and put our own pictures in, we will then save that as a new template. Notice it's also got the uh, social media buttons built in right here. And of course, in the back end, you'll be able to modify those to reflect your own uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, or Google+, or delete the ones that you don't want. And just a quick look at how you do that is you click on this Qualify. And you can see there, it, you can modify the site name. In the Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus links, your stuff would go in here. Put custom text, all sorts of fancy stuff. Down here, you would put in your slides. You would describe the site here. For instance, slide one, describe it. Upload that picture tells you what size it needs, and that would change the slider on this to be exactly what you want. So understand this, the uncoupling of content and structure or format is a huge thing. It's a huge thing. So you can have people who add content who know nothing about this part of it, but you may be in charge of handling the format of it all. So. Let's look at something else real quick while we're here. Suppose that we don't like any of these templates or any of these styles. Well, we can do something really super. How about come over here and type free Joomla templates. Boom. Ton of them pop up. I personally love Joomla Shine. You can also buy templates templates, but there are a ton of really nice free ones. So I saw this one today and on Joomla Shine, and it's a free template. Looks very cool, doesn't it? Now remember, all you're seeing are stock photos added in. You can change all this. This could be for dogs. This could be for cats. This could be a shelter photo. Um, this certainly, for Rado too, we would upload a fresh image to be that. You can modify all of this menu up here. But suppose we just want to start with getting the template. Well, let's click on it. And you can look at the demo on it or you can just say get it now. I'm already signed into my account, I believe. And we're going to take the free version. Now, the, the pro and the pro developers usually have some really cool stuff, but you don't even bother with that for now. You just don't even want to get into it. So for download. And you probably skip over a little bit of this. I've actually already done this. Okay, so we've downloaded that. Pretend we've downloaded it. Now, we'll go back to our back end here. And we'll go to Extensions. And a template is an extension. Manage. I'm going to install this new... template, which is in a zip file. Don't unzip these things unless they say, give, 
if they want you to unzip them, it'll have the name and it'll say, please unzip first. And there's sometimes you'll have to do that, but don't worry about that for now. It'll normally come as a zip file. You'll open it just like any other file install, file upload, upload and install. Boom. Thank you for choosing Joomla Shine. You're welcome. Get started. Now, if we want to make this our main template, what do we do? We go over to Extensions, Templates, remember this, Styles. Let's see if we've already enabled this. Yes, see it's showing up in our template list now. Okay, I wonder what all those positions are. Let's take a quick look. Oh, wait, let's not do that yet. We don't want to do that yet. Um, let's go to Styles, which is where you apply it. Think of styling your website like styling your hair. That's what changes the appearance of it. The template is the working part of it. The template is the hair product itself. <laughs> and the style is applying it, if you would like a really bad analogy. So, we look at our list here. The style. Oh, let's apply that one. All right. JSN Fernando, good old Joomla Shine folks. Let's make that our default template. Boom. We verify it's got a little yellow there under default, a little star there. Okay. And let's go. Oh, nothing's changed. What do we need to do? Yes, we need to reload the page. And boom. This is actually the template installed. It doesn't yet have the top uh, image filled out because we haven't uploaded that, but you can see how it's changed the style of how this thing is uh, presented because every, this is all centered now, which I don't like. Um, we've got a different sort of spacing and a different font to all this. We've got next, this is all different down here. All right, so we'll go, have to go back and, and tinker with the template, but that's how you can radically change the look of a website with just one click. No more hard coding that stuff. You just apply the template and it pulls the content out of the database and applies it to your content. All the content is not typed in on this page. This is not a whole page. This is just a collection of what? It's a collection of positions with modules assigned to those positions. That's all this is, a collection of positions with modules assigned to this position. Your content for the website gets stored in a SQL database on your host. So you don't have to do that manually. There's nothing complicated about that. When you start adding content, and we'll show that, I'll show you that in the next lesson, it is automatically stored in the database. And once it's in the database, which is just a giant Excel sheet, pretty much. Think of it as an Excel sheet. Once it's in the database, you can pull it in and massage it and do anything you want to with it without uh, having to do anything to this actual, quote, page. So in, a, in, in one sense, there's really no use in talking about web pages anymore, other than the fact that they have a particular address on the web because this isn't a singular asset. This is a template with positions on it, which are those, you know, this is a position here, this is a position here, that was that left, that right column, this is the main content area. This is a collection of positions with modules. For instance, this position has pre-built into the template a social media module assigned to it. Now you can tinker with that and take it all off, but then what's the point in having the template, right? So there are a ton of free templates available. Feel free to go look around and see what you like. Um, we will be working with Joomla 3.8, so do not pick out templates that say 1.7 or 2.5. They need to be a minimum of 3.0 at least and probably 3.8. Um, I just assume you found one that says compatible with 3.8. So that is the first look at content management systems, the uncoupling of content from 
the format and how you add a template to uh, a Joomla website. Now, for the most part, you will not be doing this right off for your volunteer hours. I'll do this part of it because I'll be installing the Joomla, etc. like that until I get some of you up to speed on it. And it, again, it is not very complicated. You'll be amazed at how easy it is to actually install Joomla. So, how do you tell if the website is written in Joomla or something else? Well, you know, it doesn't say right up here. Um, now, just a reminder, on this template, we would go back and take this off and upload our own picture to be the main header up here. But back to the question, how do you tell what this is written in? Well, there are a couple of ways. The easiest way is to take your mouse and go somewhere in here and hit right click. And this menu should pop up right here. Then click on view page source, which is also control U, which I just never ever remember because this is too easy. And this will pop up a separate window that shows you the actually the actual code behind this display. And you can do this on any website anywhere. So how do we know this is Joomla? Well we tab on down through this and we will see I didn't do this ahead of time so um, I don't have it picked out and we will see down here ah okay we'll see fresh Joomla templates all right we will see somewhere in here it'll start talking about Joomla or if it's a word perfect site it'll have WP content or WP uh, theme what we call a template in Joomla, WordPress calls a theme. And it works pretty much the same way, but be aware of that. If you're working with a WordPress site for some reason, um, oh, there it is. Okay. Let's see. Meta name generator content, Joomla open source management. It's right, it's usually right near the top, and I just skimmed over that. This we will normally change. Um, in one of the files once we get the site up and running just because we don't want hackers to be able to do what I just did and see what this is built on. It makes it a little bit tougher if you say content, uh, sheer magic, open source content management or something, just make something up. It does need to be in there but you don't have to have uh, Joomla and tell them exactly what it's built on so they know how to get into it. So that's the end of that. Now, how do we get into this back end? Well, we start with a new tab and we type in the URL backslash administrator. Uh, if you can type. Uh, and mine auto prompts because I've done this so often. So that's what you click on. Hit return. And that takes me right into well, it'll take me to a login screen. Ah, darn it. I screwed this up. Let me log out. Okay. It will take me to... Okay. It'll take me to this login screen. And this is my uh, back-end Joomla login screen for atriskintervention.org. It's just the name slash administrator ending slash... I will have a username, a password, and on this site I have something called secret key two-factor authentication enabled. And I would urge you to forget everything you know about that and don't bother learning it because I'm not sure what the hell it is either. But it makes my Joomla site more secure. It has to do with the website assigning a new key every so often to do something or other. There's a way to disable it. I often do. I leave it here now just because it's supposed to make it more secure. So, see, I am not an expert by any means. So, once I get to this thing, I put in my name, my username, and I will log in. And then I'm presented with this menu. And this is where we started. Remember, we were working with extensions, templates. We used the styles to modify which one was the main one. We used templates to look at what templates were available to be styled. And to upload a new one, we went to install. You can do install from web sometimes, but really, um, for the most part, you'll do upload package, and we uploaded a zip file for the template. So that's uh, 19 minutes. That's enough for the second lesson. 
and just pop in on the Facebook group if you've got any questions and I will do my best to answer them. Next up we're going to look at content and how to add content to a website.